Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to Let's Try Splendor. And I have a question for you. If a board game doesn't have a board, is it still a board game? I don't know, because there does seem to be a lot of these things, and it's hard to, like... I guess you'd still call them board games, but yeah, Splendor is, doesn't ha have an actual board. It's a sort of economic strategy game where you buy cards and play with gems, and it's really a lovely, lovely looking game. It has a PC digital version on Steam. It has a mobile version as well. Uh, I have not tested the online at all. I have played with the uh, the mobile version um, on my phone, it's quite good, and I just grabbed the one on uh, PC right over here, so we're going to give that a go, and look at that, we'll play a four player game I suppose over here, and um, yeah, so I, I barely played on the PC over here, did one test game to make sure everything was working, but that was it. It is a very inch. oh, starting position four, yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Starting later is probably best if you want to have a good opportunity to like read the other players and see what they're doing and try to predict their moves. Um, but that's going to be not very probable in this Let's Play scenario where I'm going to be thinking more about what I'm saying rather than reading their strategy. As a result, I probably would have preferred to go first. But in any case, this is the Splendor game, a game about owning and controlling gems. I think it's it's absolutely lovely. Um, look, also looks great in real life. On your turn, you can do one action. That action can be one from a number of things. <clears throat> you can either pick up three different color gems. The yellows are special. The yellows are the wild cards of the jokers. Um, so you can pick up any three uh, different colored gems, or you can pick up two gems of the same color, but only if there are four or more left in a stack or you can spend your gems to purchase a card. Every single card in the game, these are development cards, has a colored gem on it in the top right corner. What this does is it permanently gives you a the ability to spend a gem of that color. Um, so you sort of develop an economy. You could get to the point you know, uh, uh, later on where you could buy one of these cards without actually spending a gem chip. These are great in the real physical vo version. They're, they're poker chips basically with each of the gems, which is quite good. So again, you can pick up any three, or you can pick up two of one color if the stack's big enough, or you can buy a card. The final thing you can do is reserve a card. Basically pick up a card from a table, put it in your hand, um, and that also own, earns you one of the Joker chips, one of the wild card chips that can be used for any color. Reserving the card ensures that no one else can buy it except you, um, and also gets you those wild card chips, and it's the only way to get it. Um, there's no penalty to holding cards in hand. If you don't buy them at the end of the game, that's totally okay. There is a limit of three cards in your hand, and also, probably most significantly, there is a limit of ten total chips um, that you can possess at any given time. Um, the way the game ends is the first person, as soon as someone reaches 15 victory points, I think they call them prestige points in the game, but 15 victory points, uh, the game will end. Anyone who hasn't acted yet that round will still get a chance and going forth. So if any uh, anyone else gets the 15 points first, I will still get one more action to try to do that. Um, the cards have victory points over here. These are these development cards. Some of them have victory points. Uh, most of them on the first row are worth nothing. Occasionally you get one that's worth one. On the middle row, uh, they're worth one or two, and there's a couple of really rare threes. And the top row, you're looking, I think you can get threes, fours, and fives on the top row over here. Um, <clears throat> so it takes an action to buy these. Over on the right-hand side, you've got these noble cards that might visit your estates if you get enough fancy schmancy development. The colors over here represent how many cards, actual development cards, of each color you need to own for the noble to come to visit your estate. The advantage of the nobles, they're always worth three, and um, they don't take an action. As soon as you have three cards that uh, that give you white gems, three blues, and three greens, not, ge not the gems here, but the actual cards, you instantly get this noble earning you three extra victory points, and they're very, very, very powerful. Um, being four players is a good chance, of course, that I won't win here, because there's a certain amount of, well, not chance, well, I mean, sort of, kind of, I guess, but, you know, the, the AIs play relatively well. It's a relatively straightforward game um, to implement in sort of an AI kind of behavior way. And they do have different... Um, different personalities that can, they can be assigned to. Some are more dangerous than others, but you know, there's a good chance that you know they, they might get something that I won't. So looking at it first, there's a few things you wanna maybe evaluate uh, in terms of strategy. Oh, I forgot to mention, when you reserve a card, you can reserve one of the face down ones from one of these decks. You can sort of blind reserve if you want. So 
you can kind of get, you know, maybe make some plans by looking at the colors that are on the board that you might want to invest in for purchase. Uh, if we look at the nobles, three of them need blue, three of them need white, um, only two need red, only two need green, only two need brown. So, I mean, so blue and white might be a slightly higher priority if we want to increase our chances of getting noble. Uh, if we look at the board, especially, you know, some of the higher end stuff, is there colors that really stand out? Now there's kind of an even mix. Um, in level two, three of the cards do need blue, so, you know, there might be a little bit of invest, um, incentivization there. The problem is, the board, of course, can look completely different by the time you get to that point, because people may have bought those. So. One of the things in Splendor is I don't know what the optimal strategy is. Um, I played this game in the Extra Life United tournament, and um, I went in with very basically very little preparation of Splendor. I had read the rules, I'd done a quick Google for strategy, um, and uh, what I'd seen at a glance was really focus on the victory point cards, really try not to overly invest in the tier one cards. People say, get one or two of these, and then really focus on the others. And I did follow that strategy, and I ended up, um, um, I ended up with, I had 12 points when someone hit 15. Um, and, you know, when you look at the victory points, I was potentially one point, one turn away from also hitting 15, so it can be very tight. It looks like the average game takes maybe around 20-ish turns over there, so, um, I was pretty happy with that, but it wasn't enough to let me to go through the, um, the, to the next round. The thing is, if you do ignore a lot of the level ones, um, you do end up having to spend a lot of poker chips to buy the next tier of cards. Um, as opposed to if you buy the level ones, you can develop your economy and then start picking up more more coins at a discount. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go and actually play the game here. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of eyeball this blue gem over here. Although I'm going to be best case scenario, I buy it in round three, and everyone else is round three. They could they would have a chance to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and pick up one white one uh, red, one green over here to look into that um, because blues would be good over here and it seems like a relatively easy target. It is worth noting that the um, the cards that only need one color tend to need a lot fewer chips overall. So three chips over here versus five over here and you can see four chips over here. Um, and the ones that were worth victory points tend to be worth a little bit more as well. I'm a big fan of picking up three chips as an action as opposed to two, just because I like the bigger numbers, but sometimes you can find a good opportunity to sneak one in there. For example, if I had grabbed a single blue in the first round, this would be a great opportunity to grab a double blue. So you get fewer overall chips. And the other problem is it's often not possible to do a double chip pickup. I suppose I could have started action one picking up double blue, next round picking up a single blue, and having some options. But at the same time, this is a little safer. I'm going to pick up a red and a white. First of all, big fan of picking up the last chip of a color, because that's quite good. This would give me enough to buy this one, which would only cost me four chips. And if I pick up a green, then I'll also have the opportunity to buy this one at a cost of five chips. I love the digital version, how they highlight things that are now available for purchase. I can't purchase it on this turn, but it will do that. It makes it so much easier. In real life, it's like, okay, how, you know, you're having to sort of mentally uh, juggle how many things you can buy, especially as you toggle these chips. Um, in the digital version, yeah, you toggle some chips on, you see what lights up, you cancel that one, you pick this one up instead, something else lights up, makes it a lot easier to count. Okay, so that card did get grabbed, but that's fine, because we can still grab this one over here. Four, ch four chip cost in total, that's okay. Um, I can't do a triple card, or a triple chip pickup. I could, um, I could pick up one of these to reserve it. Also getting the wild card token, which is kind of handy. But I think it's going to be perfectly okay for me to just buy this red gem. There's actually quite a little bit of purchase I can do with red over here. And that's going to be swell. If we were going to get one of the nobles that need red, we would need four red development cards at some point. On the other hand, um, they only need two colors, those guys. So I'm going to I'm going to pick up this one. That's going to be okay. So you see over here, I've got the one development over here. And that's always available to spend every single turn. So I have, it's like I have a permanent red chip that I can spend whenever I want. All right, so some purchases are being made. Uh, you can click on these portraits here to see exactly what people are holding in terms of both chips and their ownership, so you can sort of maybe, you know, see what they might be going for, um, which is a very important part of the game in real life. All right, so I obviously don't have enough to buy anything right now. 
Um, what I would like to focus on, it would be nice to pick up things that need at least one red chip so that we can take advantage of our discount over here. Um, if I did have the ability to double pick up red here, I might do that with the ability, with the idea to pick up this green afterwards, because if I picked up two red chips plus this one, I'd be able to do it. But the stack is too short, I'm not able to do it. It'd also be awfully nice to pick up one of these. I could do a reservation, but I think now it makes more sense to just pick up bulk numbers. Um... So what I'm gonna do, ooh, it's a little, hmm. I definitely want a red chip regardless. The only question is for the others. Do I say pick up a brown and a blue to potentially head over here? Uh, I could pick up a uh, white to eventually work my way here. I mean, I guess I could double pick up a white, but I think that seems kind of silly. I think I will go and pick up the brown and blue, sort of eyeballing this over here, although things are very likely to change uh, before I get there. Um, but I do have a lot of space over here. I could do another triple pickup next turn. That would leave me at 8 of 10, and then I could do a double pickup, or most more likely, if I can't buy anything, I might pick up a card and just hold on to the wild card chip. So we'll see about that. All right, back to me. There's no purchases that can be made. If I'm gonna do a triple pickup, it would be here now. This would get me um, a second brown, not a third brown, although it would get me up enough to buy this next turn. It would all be pure chips, but isn't too bad. And early on, you obviously you're gonna have to do a fair amount of that. Um, and I guess if I'm gonna do that, I will just go ahead and obviously get the blue and the white over here. Um, because the blue might help me get this in the future, depending on how I spend it. And if I end up getting more whites, I could pick up that one pointer over there, which is quite nice. The other thing I could do, if someone spends a bunch of brown, uh, oh, almost, uh, if they get it to four or more over here, I could double pick up brown. No, not gonna happen. Um, and then on the subsequent turn, I'd be able to, pick, to buy this guy, which would be nice. Okay, what I could do, oh no, I'm at 8 of 10. I'm at 8 of 10 and I can't buy anything. It would be really nice to just wipe out the board over here, stealing all the last of the chips, but I'd have to put one back, which doesn't sound like a very efficient move. So I think this is going to be a great opportunity for me to go and um, pick up a card and hold on to it. Now, what do we want to do? We, hmm. I think I'm tempted to pick up this card over here. Um, it's worth two victory points, which is quite nice. It's a white gem, which we would need for three of the possible nobles. Um, and being all in one color, getting it all in one color can be awkward, but overall takes fewer chips. The other reason I'm thinking about it is because we actually have a lot of opportunity to pick up um, some extra red development cards, which might make this a lot easier to place in the future. Now, if I were to pick up this wild card, that would not actually be enough to purchase, say, this, because I'm missing one blue and one brown. What about over here? Okay, it would be enough if I had a wild card chip. It would enable me to purchase this card over here, because I would use the wild card as the brown. So it gives us option. We could also pick up another card um, and treat it as a wild next turn. So I'll do that. We'll pick up the yellow token. There we go. So we've got both of these actually become uh, available and become quite tempting. Green feels like a little bit lower priority, but it's still good to develop your overall economy. Nope, well, that one went away anyway. We got another blue one. So the ones that take multiple colors uh, do tend to take more overall chips. On the other hand, it's kind of easier to get a lot of development that's spread out. Um, I think we are going to go ahead and pick up this one. Either way, either way we save one chip, but more importantly, this one will cost us four chips. Uh, actually, both would cost us four chips. But I think we're going to develop the, the red a lot more. Uh, again, there's a couple of cards that might be good targets over here. But this one in particular, that would be helped by having the extra red token and also the one in our hand. Uh, we could go and pick up another one of these cards uh, and get another um, wild card token. Because that would bring us up to exactly 10 chips. But I, I, I'm not seeing a strong case for that. I think, I think getting this is going to be okay. There we go. So it does suck that we have to spend our wild card token because it's so good, but we've got our second red. And there we go. And I mean, it would help us purchase this as well. We need to get it. We need to pick up an actual brown, but there are a lot of things for us to pick up. We've got enough capacity now. We could do a triple gem pickup and that's going to be okay. Now, it was worth noting we could double red or double brown. You know what's interesting? If I did pick up double red, next turn I could play this card um, with no opposition. 
Now, I could also just buy this red card right now. So, if I were to pick up two reds, I could buy this next turn at a cost of three chips in total because of this. But remember that I'm picking up one fewer chip this turn, so it's almost like it's a four chip card. Whereas, if I'm patient and I don't necessarily look to rush this guy, I could just do a pickup like this. It doesn't really unlock anything though. I mean, this one's available and other things might be available next turn. Um, but assuming anyone makes any expenditures next turn, I could do another triple pickup, including a red chip, and then find myself in a good position to buy this anyway. Assuming someone spends something so there's tokens on the table. Uh, although no, no, because I'll be at 8 of 10, so I, a triple pickup's not really going to be possible. Hmm... I really want to move away from buying non-victory point cards as quickly as I can. I've bought two, and I still don't have any victory points, but it's still really early. Now, how much does it help to get the white? Well, this, that, and potentially this could all use the white, and of course we know the victory point. Alright, you know what, I'll double red over here, and next turn I'll probably play this. Again, there, I don't have to rush to get the one in hand unless I want that development color for assistant. Ah, so, well, hmm, interesting. We could have denied him the ability to buy that, but... So there's two things. There's like chip economy, there's, you know, victory point economy. There's all kinds of different ways to weight things. All right, the only thing I can purchase is the card in hand. I could do a triple pickup here. And I'm kind of tempted to do that, especially since, like, I would be dying a lot of color combinations here. Um, because whether I play it this turn or next turn makes no real difference. And if I do this, it brings us up to exactly 10. It doesn't unlock any purchases right now, but it really screws up the my op opponent's game. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be spending three red ships regardless, so on a subsequent turn, I'll then have the ability to, um, to still do a triple chip pickup. So he had to go wild card. He actually grabbed a, a rank one wild card. Interesting. There's a rank one purchase. And a wild card play. Very interesting. I can buy this card. Again, I don't necessarily have to rush this one. This would cost me five chips total, including one of my reds, but I actually would still be able to play this in the future. I think we go ahead and do this. Blue's another one where we need... There's three nobles that can use blue. There's... Blue doesn't have that much purchasing power on the board right now? I think we do this. I think it's a great opportunity to grab this. It's only worth one victory point, but it doesn't screw up our ability to place this down, so I think that's going to be swell. There we go. I mean, we used quite a few chips for it, but I think that's okay. You know, he picked up the rank one uh, uh, development card that was worth a victory point. He's chipping up. This is someone else who picked up a wild card, so I was like, I'm expecting some purchases there. Okay, there's nothing on the board we could purchase. Again, I could go and just pick up some chips in preparation for something else. Um, a lot of browns on the board, and I have no brown cards or brown chips whatsoever. I could double pick up the brown, or I could pick one up as part of a triple purchase. One brown is enough for this, but that's the only one that it would be sufficient for. I think what I'm going to do, I think this is a great time for me to play my white development card in hand, and then spend a fair amount of time picking up some poker chips, and see how the board develops at that point. I think I'm, I'm happy with that. So we spend three chips, all red, to pick up the white development over there. Okay. So I've got four development cards overall. You can see what kind of cards people are holding. We've got He's holding one, one, and two cards over here. And of course, they're victory point counter. Now, the fact that I'm ahead in victory points right now means nothing at all. All right. Now, I could double pick up brown, red, like either one, or I could, of course, do a triple pickup. And of course, I could start reserving at this point, but I'm not seeing any obvious reservation targets. Um, I think... I think I'll probably just do triple pickup here. Now, do I pick up red 
to start moving towards here. Right now, you don't really need a lot of red board. The other thing I can do is start kind of eyeballing the level 3 development, including pick, buying one as a wild card if I think there's a really good chance that I can get it. They're worth a lot of points, although you do invest a lot of resources in here, and they're still only worth one gem, which makes it a little harder to get um, nobles. It's basically, you're getting the, the, the tier 3 stuff, kind of, sort of, instead of hunting nobles. Um, again, at some point, we're definitely going to want to pick up at least a third white if we're going for over there. Um, I can't double pick up green. Alright, what I think we're going to do, I think I'm going to pick up a single brown, a single red, with the hope to maybe go over there. We might reserve it next turn, depending on how things go. Um, and then for my third thing, um, there's quite a lot of green on the board, and I don't have a development card for it, so I think I'm going to pick up a green token, even though I don't need it for this. Any chance I want to pick up a blue somewhere instead? No, I think we're good. All right, we'll end that. There's a good chance that I'm going to be picking up three coins next turn as well, because that only brought us up to five of ten. It'll mostly depend on what kind of coins are available. Might be another good time to do a wild card pickup. Okay, there's going to be some amount of coins available regardless, so that's okay. So if I were to go and grab a brown and a red, next turn I will be able to buy this for sure. Still a lot of green on the board, so... Oh! I can't pick up a green gem. Green gem, never mind. Um, I think it might be a blue. Because it opens up a few possibilities, also might move us towards here. So next turn, there are three cards currently that, with the, the gems that I'm picking up, that I could afford. So there's a good chance that something will be around. Obviously, I'm most interested and I'm most hopeful that this will remain. There you go, because it's worth two victory points. And... Well, it would cost us five to pick up. So we'll have to take a look at that. It costs us, like, five. It might be more uh, coins than some of the others, more jewels than some of the others, but it also is worth two victory points, so that's pretty good. Okay, that's still available. So I could pick this bad boy up, um, and both nobles that need red uh, estates or red development cards need four of them, so we might want to pile on that. There's also, you know, even at getting a three could let us save a lot of points for the higher up, um, or even work on this, which is interesting. This would be worth one development point at a cost of two coins. This is two development points at a cost of five coins. You know, that's actually, whoo! Now getting this won't make this any cheaper. And will actually prevent me from buying this on the next turn. It's also action economy. So I'm paying more than twice as many coins or, or jewels to pick up this one. You know, so it might, you know, validate that. I think... One blue coin... Alright, I think I'm going to grab this. Knowing fully well there's a good chance that I will lose that one, but I guess that's going to be okay. It's slightly more action efficient, so let's do that. Mm -hmm. So as the other thing I could have done is pick that one up to reserve it and get a wild card token. Then next turn, try to buy this one with that thing in my hand being very, very safe. I probably should have done that. Oh yeah, well. Okay, so I can buy this on the spot. We don't really need more red development at this point, though. It doesn't feel like it. If I could pick this one up, especially for free, it would be nice, um, but I don't have the brown development card, nor, I mean, a brown chip. Um, there's still a lot of brown on the table. I think I will pick up this, because first of all, that's going to be in high demand. I think we might sort of have to target some amount of brown development just for purchasing power. Um, and with that in mind, I'm going to pick up a green. Uh, I don't need another white, and I can't pick up another white. So let's pick up the blue, because it will deny that stack. And there's quite a lot of demand still for blue over there. So I guess if I had reserved that one I was talking about, I still wouldn't have had a chance to buy this one on my next turn. So I think I'm okay with the move that I made. So I'm at five points over here, but the last couple of turns go really quick as people gain the ability to purchase some of these nobles. Alright, so I could get some of these low tier cards. I do have enough room to pick up more coins, though. If I were to go brown, well, green brown, that does enable this um, on my next turn. So then I'll do that, and I may as well pick up a red. 
There's no point to it right now unless I'm deciding to make a run over here, but there might be another card that needs three plus red that comes up relatively soon. All right, I'm gonna do that regardless. Although there's something to be said about picking up that white and sort of finishing these two possibilities for the nobles. And then potentially picking up a fourth white if we're going to go for that guy instead. We'll see how it goes. We'll do some careful evaluating here because unless I'm picking up a... Unless I'm reserving a card as a wild, I can't pick up any coins here. So it's a good place to consider spending. So if I were to buy this guy, it would cost me a total of six coins for one victory point and a brown development that isn't that critical, other than the fact that everything needs brown, so that would help our economy. If I were to pick up some over here, this would cost me one coin. This would cost me three, so it's not as interesting. This would cost me two coins. I'm kind of tempted to pick up this guy, because it'll only cost me one brown coin. Uh, it brings me up to tier three in white, which Helps our economy a little bit here. End up with those like white coin sitting on our inventory that may not be required at any point. Um, certainly, there would be nothing. If I own this, there would be nothing on the current board where I would need that one coin. But that would be okay. It creeps us closer to these things. I think that's okay. Then we'll really be looking for some of the blues after. Which mostly just means we need tons and tons of brown. I could just reserve this guy. How about I do that, actually? Because actually, all of the white, the, the nobles that need the white mines also need the blue mines. So I should reserve this. Because there's not a whole lot of blue development on the table. We're still going to need one more for some options. And then at some point, uh, if we stop at three and three, we're going to need three green. If we can get to four and four of the blues, then we got that. Or we could go for three browns, neither one of which we have. So we'll see how that goes, depending on what comes up on the board. It's, it might be quite easy for us to get up to four white development. So there's a lot of cards we can buy. And the browns aren't bad because, again, we, we could go for this noble a little bit easier. So let's think about uh, coin economy over here. I think we're going to be spending our wild card. Well, okay. We're going to be spending one blue, two green, and one white. So this would cost us four coin. This one over here, this would cost us a lot more. So we get a lot more coin efficiency spending over here. This also saves our precious brown that we need for a few more things. No coins on the table. We're completely full in inventory, so we're going to do this. Um, does it use our wild card? No, it doesn't, which is lovely. I think that's a good way to go. I like this game. I like this game a lot. If you haven't uh, realized that so far, very much enjoying this. I think it's very pretty. Only downside for me is it does max out four players, which means um, it's not really going to be a game that's going to be possible to play with my regular gaming crew. So one of the white developments did go away. There's plenty of brown development on the table. So this is a little tricksy. We could pick this up, which brings us up to the level three. It does burn some of our brown tokens, which puts us further away from this. I could currently buy this one in hand, but it would cost my wild card, which I'd like to avoid. I think it's probably wise for me to grab this white development now. Okay, we still need two blue. Well, we've got one blue in hand, so we'll have to pick up another blue somewhere and an extra couple of browns somewhere as well. Just a question of order. Wow, the browns keep coming up. Uh, I think with the wild card, can I buy this one? I think I can. I could. Now, do I want to use a wild card to get a level one? Um, this would cost me brown... Uh, no, I have the brown development, so it's green coin, and that's it. This would cost me a single green coin to get my fourth white development, which doesn't help me buy things. And unless I get a whole bunch of blue development, doesn't help me get this noble. I think this is going to be a coin acquisition turn. Which actually gives me quite a few buying options. Um, especially if I'm willing to use the uh, the wild card. Okay, I think that's good. 
Also means if someone else does a coin pickup, no one else is really gonna have the option to do it. Ooh, is that a three point blue he just bought? And that's the other thing, I could be looking at these people's development and try to predict, oh, he's got four blue, four red. Yeah, he got a lot of low level stuff. And he's starting to, he has starting to chip up on actual in-game um, victory points now. Okay, I still have the wild card. I could go and plop this down now. Um, part of me is thinking about doing another coin pickup here. On the other hand, I mean, this would use more of my brown. Here's what I'm thinking. I think we pick up another brown development card at this point because again we if we do get to 3-3 three, three, white and blue with if we've got the brown we can do this currently all my blue the blue cards that I'm looking at need some brown there's a lot of brown requirement on the table I think it's okay to do this uh, this kind of cost me one it's gonna cost me two coins a green and a blue I think it's probably a good purchase though And yeah, it does actually enable me to buy this card in the next turn if I use the wild card, which isn't too shabby. Uh, one red, two white. I can also buy the card I have in hand without using my wild card token. Okay, that went away, which is fine. I think we are going to use the card in hand now. Or I could do a coin pickup. I could pick up triple coin. In particular, we're gonna... We are gonna need more brown, probably, because we're gonna wanna grab that. Now, I could grab it now if I'm worried about competition. Um, I think what makes the most sense, actually, is to grab this, because if I do that, I will be able to play these two back to back. Put me in a good spot. I still need... Um, I still need one more brown development after that. I think that's going to be okay. Do I want to pick up the white as a deny? There's not really a lot of white on the table, so no, that doesn't make any sense. Um, green, maybe. I don't have any development for it, and there's a few things that are going to take some greens, so we're going to do that. And I guess we'll pick up a blue, because there's actually quite a few expensive blue cards. I think that's okay. Both the blue, the development ones, need brown. So I'm happy I picked up that brown, because it's going to save us a chip. I still have the wild card. I can't do a triple pickup this turn. Okay, that's... That's a way to burn through all my brown. It gets to my third one, though, and it's worth three victory points. So this would cost me four chips, including my wild card, which feels kind of painful. Huh. Three victory points, though. And then I have to... Well, then I'd actually have enough brown development to just pick this one up for free if it's still around. Um, and I'd only need to pick up one brown chip to be able to buy this one. And I need the third brown development. You know what? And especially the fact that it's worth three victory points. I think that is the way to go. It does suck to spend that wild card. But, I mean, you got to spend it at some point. You sh I just like to avoid it as long as possible if I can get other efficiencies. But, yeah, with three victory points and the fact that it uh, gives a brown gem. And it's actually the only one on the table. Well, now there's this, but I wasn't in a position to buy that anyway. Now, there are a couple things that might justify picking up a little bit of extra white. If I were interested. And, actually, if I can get up to triple green, that'll I'll unlock a second noble. But I think I've got to focus on getting the first noble first. And then maybe I'll just focus exclusively on getting green at that point. So I could pick this one up at no jewel cost. It's not worth victory points. The alternative is as long as I picked up one brown, then I start to unlock the ability to buy this. Do I want to give up the possibility of picking this one up at no gem cost in exchange for getting this one a little faster? I think I am going to purchase this now, since there's no other blue on the table. Now, one might come up. I think the more efficient way would be to just pick up coins, but there's a chance that I will lose this thing, and that would be not great. So we're going to do that. 
That counter, by the way, that shows up every night again shows you how many deck cards are left in here. Every time they flip one out. Because you can run out and then cards stop showing up there. I think I've only ever seen the uh, the white development, or the, sorry, level one development start to run low. All right, I have quite a few purchases I can make. Um, including the option to grab some green. Now, one of the things that is gonna be a question now is how close are we to finishing? I think what I have to do is I have to set myself in up in a position to be able to buy this. If I were to buy this, that would bring me up to 11 and would unlock um, this noble over here. Brings me up to 14. Doesn't end the game, but if I can just ping one thing out after that, we get to 15. So that's our victory path, is, is to do that and then unlock one of these. So I think I have to prioritize getting a noble before someone else does. So that will require me to get one, green, one brown token. After that, um, the, the one victory point might come from something like this. So... We have the green, we have the red, or the white locked in. We will need another red token to be able to buy both of these. Uh, another option to pursue, we're going to have our third blue. Again, we need that extra red token and the white. So both of these will still be uh, purchasable for us, which is nice to see. Um, we've got the brown, so that's that. So I don't think it matters what the third color is. So I'll just pick up another green. So I should be able to, next turn, buy this, get my noble, and the turn after that, hopefully pick up one victory point. Okay, he bought that one. That one there. It'll be a question of what, if there's a, a victory point thing still going to be available. It'd be nice if we could have picked up a second brown, because then I would have had enough to buy this guy. Now, I could buy this now, but no, we're going to play this down so that I can purchase the noble. I don't purchase the noble. It doesn't even take an action. You see it highlights in green, and there's no choice. It gives you the noble no matter what. It's actually impossible to refuse it. If you're playing a game of Splendor and someone misses the fact that they could have grabbed the noble, you have to tell them. All right. So we just need to pin out one more point here. And it doesn't look... The fact that this guy... Because if he'd done that and picked up a noble, that would have been the end of the game. Um, I was last, so if I had the ability... Oh, and I don't. Look at that. I don't have the ability to buy anything for a victory point. So I would have lost at 14. So these are all kind of hard to reach here. Although, here's what I could do. I could double pick up white. Right, if I do that, that becomes purchasable next turn, assuming no one can steal it from me. Um, is there any other route? Well, a single red gets me that. But then I could pick up one white, but that's not enough there. If I had a wild card, it'd be nice if there was some path that would give me the ability to um, pick up... That could, that could reserve two cards. Here's what I'm going to assume, though. I don't think, and we can look because it's public information, no one has enough white to buy this one. So unless they reserve it as a way to block me, I no one else is going to be able to buy, purchase this card. So I think I'm going to pick up two whites. So on the next turn, even if someone manages to hit 15, I will be able to buy this and actually get myself to 16 points. So I'm not even caring what color it provides. Ooh, a 14. So close. Okay, he doesn't buy anything, so he can't get a noble. I think we're going to win with 16. This, I don't think there's any way for this guy to win. Bam, so we purchase this, and turn brings us to 16. We're the last player as well, so no one even gets another turn. Because we had the equal number of rounds, and we've won! And let me tell you something, I'm so happy that I managed... Oh, excellent, I'm going to get a bunch of achievements, because it's my first win um, here on Steam. For AI with four players, three different types of AI. Beautiful. So yeah, there's some achievements and things like that. Because yeah, it's, it's, not, um, it's not that easy to necessarily win this game. Oh, 28 turns. Took us 37 minutes of play. Set a new record for my points. And yeah, so there's the online game. I don't know what challenges are. There's a tutorial as well. It's such an easy game to play, though. What, what is this? Oh! Oh, what? Okay, holy crap! The riches of India inflamed the dreams of the King John II of Portugal. He wanted to open a direct path from the spice trading or to spice trading and bypass the Middle East traders. Help him find sponsors from the court to finance expeditions. From turn number ten 
onwards, the value of prestige points increases by one point every turn. I wonder if that's the ones on the board or all of the ones in your hand. Does it include the ones that didn't have any prestige points? I don't know, but that's very interesting. So it, it changes the game completely. Sort of just fun achievements to mix things up. Starting cards, cards are preset, then randomize it. Well, if you, you will lose this challenge if you end up in a blocked situation. I don't know what that means. You can reserve a maximum of two cards. Oh, that's different. You start with two tokens per color. Oh, so it's going to be a fast game. Only the level one deck is using this challenge. Oh, all right. So you're only buying level one cards, but the value goes up. So you're really just looking to buy as many cards as possible in this particular challenge. Value of cards increased by three. Oh, tell you what, I'm just going to load this up just to see how crazy this looks. I'm not going to play this now. I see. Oh, wait, it's solo play. This is a time limit. Oh, I love this. What the hell? I even start with two wild cards, but let's try to avoid using that right away. That's worth four points. So, okay. Okay, 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 okay. These are still worth zero. This must be one that would normally be worth one point. But if I have no opponents, I don't have to worry about someone stealing this from me. So I can grab this, even though it's worth nothing. And the nobles are still there, so like... The game might be... Just see how quickly we can kickstart our economy. Reds, two browns, no matter what. Oh! Oh, and... Oh! Oh, and if I become blocked, I see! I can only carry eight coins. Oh, that's very odd. So, I mean, I can do this, and I can start to pick up again. But I can see what they mean about getting blocked. If I can't buy a card, or if I'm full of coins, or can't buy things. Uh-huh. Can I do a double pickup? No. So that rule still applies. Um, oh, that's interesting. And there aren't enough coins. There's only two coins of each color. So the only way I can buy this is if I had used the wild card, or now if I develop more white, which seems like maybe the thing to do, although I can't get another brown. So... Well, whichever. Um, do I pick up a green? No, pick up... Well, I already have the white for that. Do you know what? I will pick up the green instead. Yeah, because... Okay, and turn. So now I can buy this. Ah, oh, this is awesome! Shit, this would keep me busy on airplanes forever. Is this... I assume that's the turn timer, unless that's the prestige goal. I bet you it's the turn timer, and I bet you I'm already going to lose. So I can work my way up to purchasing that or that, which would both be good. Um... And I guess I'll pick up uh, red with the assumption that we might be able to get something over there soon. And then the other color, whichever. Um, if I do buy this, then I'll get close to purchasing this thing. So let's, let's do that. And then as long as I pick up the second white coin, then I can buy this at some future time. So the reds, so we'll need some, we'll need a blue for that. We'll need some green for that at some point, but... Do I need a second red chip? Not right now. Let's pick this up for variety and see what goes on. So we're going to buy this. Bam. Excellent. Um... We should probably pick up green chips with the idea of grabbing some of these bad boys. So we're almost in turn 10 here. And yeah, if the turn limit is... Um, is 14, if that's what that's saying. It looks like that's a symbol for victory points, though, so I'm not sure. I think maybe the only way to lose is to um, get blocked, and I bet you it keeps track of how many turns it took you to one. To, to one. English good. And then, you know, try to beat your record. So we can do something like this. So I will buy the... I'll buy the green producer. We'll see if we can stack more of those. Okay, turn 10. So after... The, or turn 11. So, I'm still on four victory points over here, so I don't think that made a change to that. Now, none of these are going to give me green tokens. So, that's a little annoying, but I don't know. Um, which one am I missing here? I don't have any blue yet. If something comes up that needs multiple blue, it might be a little annoying. So... 
Let's do that. There we go. And just try to buy the greens first when they come up. So what do we need for this? Oh, no, I can get this now. Good. All right, you're not a green. But I can buy that. Oh! Oh! I think my victory point goal keeps going up. Oh! Oh, snap! Okay, so there's a... Oh! Damn. Speaking of green... I mean, I can keep buying this. At a certain point, I'm going to get the ability to sort of insta-buy everything. It's probably better than picking up coins right now. So, yeah, we'll just grab whatever. Oh. Okay. Nothing that gives me green is coming up. Although, I'm very close to having enough blue. Alright, let's do that anyway. Um, and then, I don't know, sure, pick up more white. So that's going to be victory points. But yeah, the number goes up. Ow! Oh! Alright, well, I mean, I think I'd play this quite differently if I were doing this again. So I can get that for more victory points. Oh, and I got a noble. That's Alright, I can still aim for the nobles. I can grab you. So that was worth four victory points. And choose. Oh, I think you can only pick up one noble per turn. They're automatically only get one per turn. So I should get it this turn. Um, and actually this will technically open up a second option for them as well. There you go. 31. Okay, so I won in a certain number of turns. 28 turns. Which I'm betting the score... Oh, and then you can try to beat your record. Oh my god! Alright, so I've just found something that's going to keep me busy for, like, a thousand years, because each one of these locations has multiple maps. And so the first time through is like, okay, can we beat it? But after that, it becomes a question of, can we beat it better? Oh, what a great game. Alright, well, anyway, that's, uh, <laughs> I, I just thought I was going to play a normal game. I didn't even know about this. Uh, that's Splendor, again, available on Steam. It is not available for the Mac, unfortunately. Um, I, and probably not Linux either. It's probably Windows only for the Steam version, which is a little bit disappointing, and I don't know why that's the case. Um, but it's also available for mobile devices. And I'm someone who, like, always worries for mobile games about, like, my old man eyes on the phone. Like, it'd be different on a tablet. But I have to say, this was very easy uh, to play on the phone, and I had no problems at all. So, that's Splendor. Thanks for watching. See you next time.